We're doing a VSL kind of page for our funnel. And not, we're not doing a webinar for it right now. Eventually, I'm thinking of making it into a webinar. What do you sell? So um, we sell info product that is for um, baby boomers who want to turn their boxes of photos into stories for their family oh, for awesome. the future. So, um, so it's not a really high ticket item, but eventually I want to make it into a more, um, more medium sized deal that I would make me do a webinar for. But right now it's not. It's as, as we're building it, as we're working on it, it's a, a little bit lower, a $97 OTO with a intro product. So it's gonna be the OTO is the, the one that we're building here. And it's gonna be more of a VSL We'll have a video at the top and then the sales page. So funny enough, a VSL is actually the same thing as a presentation funnel. You're just putting, making them register ahead of time. It's the exact same thing. Because we're okay. going to follow up the exact same way. Because you think about it, like a VSL page is the broadcast page right there. So mm -hmm. it's, it's actually the same thing. The only difference is we're pre-framing them as saying, this is a special presentation. You get to see register so you can make sure that we get it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, that it's, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And that way, uh, and it's, it's a lot easier. So let's pull it off that way. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing a health coaching business. And I like the idea of, of having people apply and getting them on a phone call. Cool. Just because it's not going to be right for everyone, like yeah. what I'm teaching. So is there a way to, to maybe build that into the presentation funnel? Or should I focus more on the phone I would, funnel? I would do the phone funnel. The phone funnel? Yeah, just right there. Okay. The webinar is in every one of these. The actual presentation itself is in every single one of them. It's just the format that you're just bringing them in under. <clears throat> yeah, it's in, we call it the presentation funnel because it's very awesome for presenting on any product. Um, but it's the same script for every single funnel. That's why I showed the chatbots thing. That's a webinar, but in that funnel. A webinar is what I sell my join my downline with for this funnel. It's the same script for every single funnel. It's just the difference in page types. Yeah. So then on that commission-based funnel, are you, are you popping up, like you, you have your presentation video going or whatever. Sorry. So on the, on the commission-based funnel, so our story or origin story is what it says. So that is your, your, your webinar-ish thing that you mm -hmm. do, right? And then, but the what you get and then the other part, that pops up, say, later into the thing, or are you showing that from the very beginning? The webinar itself. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Like, at what point did the, the two lower parts of that first page show up? Are they from the moment you start? Like, you get this from them and this from us? Or does that show up, like, later after you've educated them some? Yeah, that one right there. So when is the what you're going to get from XYZ? When does that show up on the page? Is it? Always it's, the, it's always on the page. It's always? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so I'm selling someone else's product. Boom! What's going on, everyone? My name is Steve Larson, and this $50 right here is how it all started. <laughs> <laughs> I, in college, was super excited. I lost a good chunk of the list because of that little toupee. Did you and I it? waved as they went. I decided for just the one class that I would go take called Internet Marketing. And I went and I was like, yes, the semester's come up for this. What am I saying? Right now, what am I saying on the video? Origin story. Origin story. How did I originally get into the affiliate game? That's all I'm saying is that story. I walk into the room, I sit down, and the professor sits, and he looks at the whole class, and he goes, who can define SEO? I know it's a little tricky. And I was like, Pfft. like, I was so sad. I was like, no, oh man, I had already been studying internet marketing for years. And, uh, and I was just bored out of my mind. And I remember even just after just the second class period, I walked up to him and I drew a funnel. Now, I didn't know that that's what I was drawing. This is not the one, but I drew a funnel funnel. And I said, Hey, I don't want to be here anymore, but <laughs> I want to go build this. And he looks at me and shockingly he goes, all right. And so I left and I grabbed the other kid that uh, looked like he was also bored out of his mind. And I took him and he and I held our own class every day for three hours, the whole semester with no other purpose than to make as much money as we possibly could every day together. And it was the scariest thing ever. We were currently in debt, my wife and I, $28,000, uh, right? That's how much we took him for student debts all throughout college. And we were living on loans. And I remember I took a $50, I took $50 
and which was a ton of money for us at the time, right? 50 bucks. And, uh, and I went and we built this little tiny squeeze page and nothing like ClickFunnels ever existed at that time. And uh, we grabbed something off of uh, an affiliate product that we, we decided we'd promote. And we spent three hours building that first squeeze page. And uh, then I take that 50 bucks and I went and I tossed that $50 in on ads, which was the scariest thing I could ever imagine in my life. And, uh, and I went to bed and I was nervous and I like was nervous to tell anybody what I had done in case I failed. You know? And I woke up the next morning and I tore out of bed, ran to my computer and logged in. And there in my account was 50 more dollars. I think it was 60 bucks actually. I think we made like 10 bucks. And, um, and I remember looking at it like relief that I hadn't lost the money, but I was confused. I was like, I lost. No, I lost. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I had 17 people on my list and $60 that I had spent. And I was like, it was the first time I ever spent any kind of money on the internet. And uh, I was blown away. And the game started that way for me. Affiliate marketing, right? Okay. So to answer your question too, it doesn't need to be the same origin story every time. What I'm doing is whatever I'm selling, how did I originally get into that thing? And that's the story that I tell. I tell it in the Epiphany Bridge script format, which we'll go through in a moment, so you guys can write your own out. Does that answer some questions though? And then for yours, let me scroll down here and I go straight into it. All right, I, I end up pitching on this video. What you're, what you're gonna get from Russell below is all this stuff. Cool, look at the total value. I just screenshot his offer. All right, so for MLM stuff, I do the same thing. Um, and then for, plus from me, this is what you're gonna get from Steve J. Larson, wow. This share funnel, X, Y, Z, all this stuff. Total together, that's this amount. It's only this amount when you go buy Russell's thing. Click right here to go join, okay? And then if I fill this out, it takes, it's a redirects to my distributor link, it, for your example. Um, it redirects to my affiliate link. Testimonials, does that answer some questions on it? Yeah. Yes, Will. Um, quick thing on the origin story. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, we've, You've given us a script, we're filling it out. Yeah. And now you're saying, well, it kind of, you, you can change it around depending on whatever you're selling. What you're doing. Yeah. It's cool. So, this is, it's a free, it's a, there's, it's more flexible than people believe it is. So, so I, so I have a little more clarity on that. That is, we are doing the orange story based on what our gig is right now. Yes. The one, the core gig. that you're going to sell. Uh huh. Okay. Not 15 different origin stories. So I'll go in and I often tell the story about my wife and I and how we had nothing and it was, it was rough. But there's a place where I usually stop and I'll transition into whatever I'm actually selling. And it's because it tells the first few parts of the script, which is I need to tell them my backstory, what were my internal, my external desires and what was the wall. And the wall in the story for me is always when my dad says, no, I won't give you the money. But then from that point, the epiphany, which is the next part in the script, which we'll go through, that changes based on whatever I'm selling. Got it. Yeah? Thanks. Yes? With the epiphany, um, does that link to the, out of the three secrets, would that be the internal one or does it change every time? Uh, it does change every time, yeah. Right. Now I'll go right into the story for secret number one there. We're getting a little bit ahead, but is, is that helpful though? Oh, uh, no, if you reload it, that's just based on when the next OFA starts. And then it just auto updates for the next time the next OFA starts. We don't have to look at it. But if you had like a closed cart going on, it would be your closed cart date. Yes, yeah, exactly. Definitely. Thanks, Robert. Awesome. Do you have a presentation, one that we can go look at? That, so that's your, that's your uh, commission one. Where's another example, say, of, a, of a, just a regular presentation of one? Yeah, so you can't remember Max. That, that one's still... Still killing it. I didn't really send too much traffic to my funnel stash. It's not really like a core because there's a million funnel courses out there and I don't want to compete with that. So that's why we haven't done it. But I would, um, anyway, yeah, it's, this is the page. It's a registration page. This is what I'd go, go check out here. We will be killing this soon though. <laughs> FTC. <sighs> No, but I just don't want them to be. <laughs> so anything that is based solely on recruiting, they have a hard time with because it looks like face value to them, like a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. It's not, but face value, they don't know who I am. Why is I so big? 
he's clearly a Ponzi scheme. You know what I mean? And I'm just, I'm just staying out of Dodge. So we're just gonna, we're, we bought moderndownline.com. So we're gonna rebrand the whole thing. That's way, way less scary than secret MLM hacks <laughs> at face value for ad teams, for Facebook ad teams on their side. They know who we are now because we spend enough money in ads. We spent a quarter million in ads to this now. And um, anyway, so that's, that's why. Uh, you can flip back to my slides here. All righty, thanks so much. Okay, so we're gonna move forward. All righty, that's helpful though, yeah? A lot more clarity on where we're moving with this? The game gets really simple when you understand my role in my business is not to know all the funnel parts. It is for me to understand how to build the script. That's what it is. And even then, a lot of times I have, you know, we're writing for you guys. Uh, your stuff. So I'm going to ask you the questions that we need in order to write your thing for you. All right. And the game gets really, really simple. I am responsible for the message, the offer, and the campaigns. That's the only thing you're responsible for as well. So the rest of the program, we've created it under that premise so that uh, you can do it exactly how, how you're supposed to. Alrighty. Oh, sorry. It's dark over there. <laughs> What, what's your main thing you're selling? So right now, like tax layer services, um, that's what I thought of, so I could lead them into real estate investments. What's the price point? Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. I'm thinking like maybe 1997. What do others sell it for? Or I, I haven't, like when I, when I went to my person, he said like 8,000 a year, but I'm gonna have like my personal little, I don't know. Have to do That's totally fine. Um, um, and so, is it more one-on-one -on -one based services? Um, it's going to be like info product. Sorry, info product. And then, if they want, I'm going to upsell them on my bookkeeping tax preparer service. Um, but I'm going to be like, it's going to be like my story of how I slayed my taxes for the last past two years, so that they get more money to invest in my real estate investments. I love it. Um, what else do they learn? What else do they get with your offer? Uh, what do they get with my offer? Uh, well, I guess I should think about that tonight. <laughs> That's all right. We, 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 there's a section on that coming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, what I'm going back and forth between is should it be phone funnel? If you're like trying to figure out, hey, should this be phone funnel? For me, what I'm trying to think through is mm -hmm. what level of personalization is there? Because if there's any level of personalization, I would always go phone funnel. Mm -hmm. because you want to vet them. They should not be able to come in and just buy your time with a swipe of a credit card, right? Um, I made that mistake several times. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, you don't, and so you want to vet them. Um, if they, because they're still going to go through a presentation, the same script, like in any other funnel, is the same thing, um, but the instrument of making them apply is going to be very powerful. If it's straight info and you're not involved in the fulfillment at all, which I highly recommend for the core of your funnel, by the way, the core of your business. Don't put yourself in the, uh, I, I, there's a lady I was coaching once and she goes, every person who buys my, my $500 thing gets a 15 minute consultation with me. Oh, you just lost your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the goal is to sell thousands of these, like thousands times 15 minutes. Like, yeah, you're done, <laughs> right? <laughs> Buy your coffin. Like don't. So, <laughs> so, uh, don't, don't involve, don't put your own personal time. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Can, can I ask you real quick? Would yeah. you think a Facebook community for tax slayers is a good idea then or no? Yes, but I call it group coaching. Group, okay. So what I say is like, we got, so in the stack, because there's a lot of times people have a few more questions. Mm -hmm. I'll say you get group Q&A with me just such and such times. So you can still have the personal touch and they're going to love that. Emotionally, that's like a, that's a good stroke of like, oh, let's put the blanket on. Everything's okay. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it also saves you from dying. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Melinda. Can we get the box over here? <laughs> Thanks, Stella. <laughs> Can you help me close an open loop? I am selling relationships, essentially teaching cooking. So I'm not B2B. And when I think about those price points, a lot of what we talk about are B2B price points. Mm -hmm. I don't really see the top of my value ladder very well because no one's going to pay me three thousand dollars. Sure. I mean, what what am I going to do? Go organize their cabinets? Like, can you just help me understand the difference between B two B price points and more what I'm doing? What are they used to paying for already, price point wise? 
that's one of my struggles is a lot of these people are used to a lot of free material on the internet um, okay. or they're using Pinterest as more of a dreaming tool. A lot of them are not buying very much right now. If they're buying it, something like a cookbook, um, you know, maybe they're buying an uh, organizational course, a relationship course. So that will probably be answered as we move forward because we're going to go specifically about customer selection very soon here. Yeah. Yeah. And if it doesn't, just let me know.